Hello, 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 and welcome to Civil War 2. And I have just finally got my mic and boom set up, and I've got like a pop sound shield, which I... I don't know what it does exactly, but, uh... People said it's useful, so it's... something. I don't bloody know. Anyway, right, Civil War 2! I, and a jod game about the American Civil War, so I cannot wait to mispronounce all the bloody Southern American like town names, you bloody French Louisiana. Anyway, right, okay. So, options. Let's go over the options that I have that will affect the game. So we have foreign entry is at normal. I would be tempted to set that to hard just to see what the challenge is like, but as we are going to be playing the Confederate States of America, it's going to be difficult anyway. Right, small delay on the units engaged into the battle. This is mostly because, like, a delay of about a few hours is likely anyway. So we'll have to go with that. Automated uh, replacements, I'm going to leave this on 15%. In the future, I may just turn this off. Well, actually, I'm going to turn this off for now, as I'm going to manually handle that. Historical attrition, of course. Activation rules. Right then, so basically, that, well, veteran activation. It's basically... Everyone is activated, everyone can move, but the thing is, when the actual turn is computed, say a um, army is commanded by a general who enters into battle, there's a chance that the general could not actually be activated during the battle, so his performance would be absolutely shockingly poor, Well, as if he does activate, he will perform to his actual abilities. Randomised generals, I think I'm going to go for a high randomization. but uh, well actually no, we'll go for medium randomization. this... This adds a little bit of flavour to the generals and makes it a little bit more interesting. Naval box handling, um, the navy, well basically you have to re resupply your ships and repair them, etc, etc, etc. Extended pool, we are playing with the amount of historical units, so basically we can't just recruit crazy amounts of units. Easy supply is off and a uh, traffic penalty, a medium traffic, yeah, traffic penalty is in effect. I've, I've just, it's been too long, I'm like speaking all gibberish. Activate AI, yes. AI ranking on the hardest difficulty. So the AI will receive more replacements. The AI has a reduced maximum stack penalty, though no combat bonus is given. It is vice to... Well, I don't know. Maybe... Uh, I'll, I'll see how it goes. I'll see how it goes, actually. Activation, AI detect bonus and aggressiveness and give the AI more time. Um, we're going to have all these things on. Is the music a little bit too low? No? Doesn't seem to be playing right now, so that would explain why it's a little bit too low, isn't it? So there we go. Right then, so we're going to go for a brand new game, aren't we? So let's see, we'll go for the scenarios lasting more than 12 turns. And uh, I believe this is the full thing, yes. Right then. <clears throat> Turn the music up there. As the Union player, you have three objectives. First, in the east, you must destroy the Confederate army and begin your advance on Richmond. Second, in the west, you must use your land and riverine forces to capture Forts Henry and Donaldson, and uh, consolidate your hold on Kentucky and Missouri. Only then can you begin your operations to control the Mississippi River. Third, you must begin your naval campaign against the South by capturing or blockading southern ports. As a Confederate player in the east, you must decisively defeat the Union armies before you're eventually overwhelmed by the superior manpower and material of the north, as well as protect the south from invasion by land and sea. In the west, you must undertake operations to control the borders of the wait, control of the border states of Missouri and Kentucky, as well as maintain your control of the Mississippi River. Okay, guys, so we are going to play the Confederate States of America. So I'm looking forward to this. Right then, control of Memphis, Nashville, Richmond, Bowling Green, and Washington can resolve. Well, can achieve this result of victory. I apologise if I'm talking gibberish, just because I don't sleep much. <laughs> right then, so we are in at last. And you, you can definitely see the difference between this map and Two End All Wars. So we're going to take a quick look around the map and familiarise ourselves, and shall we? Um, if you are American, you'll be fine with this. We can see the states here, I do believe. Does it show the states? No, this is future operations. Is there one for the states exactly? Political states. Ah, here we go. Right then. Louisiana. I'm not too sure. <laughs> okay. So you can see all the states are definitely here. We, uh, well, have the map extend to Mexico all the way down here. Where the map loads. Come on, there we go. Okay. We also have parts of the Caribbean. As you can see, there are British holdings here. The British 
Spanish and I believe French are in the game, as well as Mexicans, and they can influence the war depending. Now the way that um, influencing other powers to join the war is basically resolved over here. For an entry, you will gain or lose foreign intervention points in this scenario depending on your national morale and your victories or defeats in the field. After a certain level has been reached, foreign powers may intervene in this scenario in favour in your favour or against you. So basically, the more victories we have than like the big victories, that will sway the foreign intervention meter. And I believe once it gets to 100%, then foreign intervention is very, very imminent. So we can see here, there's lots of little, oops, sorry, uh, there is decisions, like, let's find, uh, right, here we go. So at the start, we could, compl well, we could declare a complete cotton embargo. So basically, foreign intervention is increased by up to 15%, however, it's possibly decreased by 20%. I believe that is if the Union uses this, or it could actually backfire, so we'll have to see. There's the Territorial Concessions, which obviously costs us quite a bit of morale and victory points. So you can see here, there's a lot of different things. We'll have to see. And we have the Trade Concessions, so basically... Foreign entry is slightly increasing, plus three. So that would give us plus three. I don't know if this would be uh, over a year, I'm not too sure. Probably just right. Ah, right, so it can be renewed every six months, and basically. And this can only be taken once, but it increases the uh, chance of joining the war by ten. Now, there's a lot to be said about using these options fairly early on. I mean, they do cost quite a lot, but the thing is, the early on is the best we're going to have, or the best chance we're going to have at actually choosing victory over the North. So, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's debatable whether you should use these. And we could move our capital to Atlanta, which is quite interesting. Obviously, that would cost us quite a bit of uh, morale, um, but it does make our capital somewhat harder to achieve, well, to be conquered. We can print some money, which obviously would increase our inflation, raise taxes, which decreases inflation by 1% actually, but it obviously costs us morale. A lot of these things do cost morale, issue war bonds, which also reduces inflation by 2. So basically we could go for these and uh, get a hell of a lot of cash and reduce inflation to 2%. Is the music loud enough or not loud enough? I'm not too sure. I'll keep it at this level. Okay, war replacement, so we already need to replace them with the line infantry, apparently, yeah. Okay, constrict companies. Request of this turn is, well, obviously four. Hmm. Um, I'm not going to be recruiting anything in terms of a military unit this turn, so I'm going to put some uh, replacements into there. Uh, we do also need some heavy artillery. That would most likely be the heavy cannon that are evident in the forts. So let's take a look then. We begin the uh, we begin the civil war with basically the armor of uh, Mr. P G T Beauregard. He is a four-two-three with a low seniority. Well, seniority that's not too good. He's a four defender and a deceiver, so that's quite interesting. Four defender, um, right? Provides a one-point siege bonus for the whole stack this lead is in when defending in a fort and reduces by ten percent the time necessary to obtain the next entrenchment level. So basically, we're going to need him for entrenching our armies, which will be quite good, as that's going to play definitely to our advantage if we fight on the defensive in choice locations. And he's also a deceiver, so the army is quite good at being able to hide. And uh, yes, Quaker guns, camouflage in the enemy. Well, camouflage in our real strength. But what we're going to do is we're going to advance to the Fort Sumter and we're going to attack Fort Sumter and assault it this turn. Right then, so we do have a... Well, we do have the Carol, Carolina Runners. So we have the Huntress and the... Uh, what is this? The Alt... The Atkin. Aitkin. 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 Yeah, basically a tiny transport... Um, I'm not too sure. We do have the shipping lanes and the Atlantic blockade. There's some other shipping boxes that are here, as well as the Gulf of Mexico, the Gulf blockade. And, uh, yes, okay, so you can he see Paris over here, England, uh, North Atlantic, Nova Scotia with Halifax. So that is the British holdings up here in Canada, which is going to be quite important. I don't know if there's any more holdings in the north. We can't see any here. As I believe this is like the Columbia line or something like that, I can't remember the name of it. 
Um, there are Indian forces represented, and they do have quite the effect. Ah, great Canadian plains. Let's take a look over here. We can see we have Indian forces. Now, these may join us in the future. I believe they have a good chance. There is Western New Mexico, Eastern Arizona, Western Arizona, Southeastern California, Southern California, Central California, and at last, Northern California. To the coast of Oregon we go. To Nevada. To Utah. To Oregon. And to British Columbia. To Vancouver. Okay. It's interesting, during this period, Mexico was invaded by Napoleon III. Like, Mexico was in a terrible financial position after just... The Republicans had only just ousted, I believe, the imperial faction in uh, the capital of Mexico City. Was it Mexico City? I can't remember the name of the capital at the time. But yes, Mexico had defaulted on their loans, or they they were just not able to pay back the loans. So a force of Britain, Spain, and France was assembled. Well, of the forces of those nations. And they landed somewhere down here. Then, uh, basically, Napoleon III, well, he desired glory, did he not? So what he did was, he landed, I can't remember exactly where he landed troops. But he landed troops, and seeing the amount of troops and the attempt behind this action, the British and the Spanish basically buggered off, and they're like, we don't want any part in this. So yes, so began the uh, Napoleon III's ambitions to make, em well, to make the Empire of Mexico. Uh, what happened was the French forces marched on the capital, but they were defeated, I do believe. Or oh, they weren't defeated at the capital, they were defeated near the capital. And I believe it was a not for another year until reinforcements arrived and they were able to finally assault the capital and take over the capital and install the imperialists and, oh, I can't remember the name of the bloke, but he's basically a Austrian, oh, I can't remember his name, he was an Austrian. It was something to do with the Austrian throne that the Napoleon wanted to smooth relations over, I'm not too sure actually. But yes, that created the Empire of Mexico, which was eventually crushed by the rebels as they slowly pushed their way back down as France had to bring back their troops after the formation of Germany. Okay, right then, so that was a little history lesson that wasn't delivered very well as per usual. So let's take a look at what we are facing. We have Fort Pickens over by Pensacola, which we're going to have to definitely deal with. Uh, the only problem is these forts are very well manned. Well, mo some of them are. They have a lot of guns, actually. They're quite dangerous to the navies. So we kind of do have to assault them with the army. Let's take a look at what we have here. So this will not be available for another three turns, but that will be quite useful. Okay. Um, we basically have garrisons for the most part. So yes, for now, this is the only action that is going to be going on. So we can take a look over here. And that just basically tells us that we have this garrison here. Right then, so we do have the uh, political options and diplomatic options. So let's go over here. Um, right then, so we could issue some war bonds. That will cost us some victory points off the bat. But oh well. I am uh, tempted by this. Print paper money. I believe I will print the paper money. I will issue war bonds. And I will raise taxes. So this will lower our morale by 2, take 25 victory points. But inflation will will rise by a net of 4, but it will lower to 2. So we will gain 600, 1200, 1800 in, well, 1800 dollars. It's it's, you know what I mean. It's like each dollar is like a thousand dollars, but you, you, yeah, you get what I'm trying to say. We basically have fifty thousand dollars now, but I'm just gonna say fifty. It's easier that way, trust me. Okay, so what forces do we have available to us? I believe this is the Mississippi. No, this is the our Cheetah River. I'm right. Okay, so we have Mississippi here. Is it the Mississippi? I'm not American. I don't know the rivers. I know kind of where they are, but I'm not that good. The Lower Alabama River, no? Yeah, oh god, there's so many rivers. I'm guessing the Mississippi River is like a really big river. Probably. Somewhere around here. 
Okay, so we can put this on so we can see the owner of the territories and the regions. So yes, right then, so what do we have here? We have the Gulf Squadron, and what do we have inside the Gulf Squadron? We have the Lewis Cass and the CSS Washington. Now you are a tiny transport, and I would like to send you... Uh, I would like to mass the fleet actually. But it's somewhere that we do need to strike at. This is basically Norfolk. We definitely need to take Norfolk as soon as this area becomes available, as Norfolk is a major, major port. It's the largest port. And it does have a lot of goodies that we are going to need. But I am going to gather my fleet over at Charleston, I do believe. Yeah, soon enough we'll have the remainder of the fleet. We are drastically outgunned in terms of naval power. Yeah, Great Britain here is British. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> if you get Britain into the wall, then holy shit. You are gonna win. You can see here the strength. So the United States of America, 265 land forces, 858 naval forces. Britain, 620 and 2,028. And then France, 68 and 1,102. Mexico, 86 and 0. I would love to bring a Mexico onto my side. I would love that. So we have about 100. I don't know our naval strength, but it's not that high. So as we can see, there is some objectives here. So the main objectives obviously are Washington DC, St. Louis, Louisville, Norfolk, and Baltimore. So if we take uh, St. Louis over here, we're going to have to put into work some machinations to take over this city. And it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. What I'm going to plan on doing is trying to draw the forces out with cavalry or something like that. I would love to take St. Louis, but there is some good cities here as well, like Alexandra. Well, Alexander or Cairo. Is it Cairo or Alexander? One of them. Okay. I do need to find my gunboats. We do have a uh, squadron over here. We have the... Right then, so we do have an ironclad under construction, which will be ready in about nine turns. The CSS Manassas. But we do have this. They will be activated in one turn. And that will give us some uh, river boats. We should be able to see. Oh, is this all we can recruit for now? So basically gunboats and etc, etc. Um, we have a very limited rail pool. We have a fairly limited river pool, or riverine pool. So we're going to have to be quite careful with that. So I will bring the... Uh, well, I don't need to bring out the Carolina runners. There's really no need for that. I don't want to risk any damage to the actual ships due to the fact that the fortress does indeed have quite good guns. But then again, I believe there's only a handful of men, maybe like a hundred... 100 men in the actual fort itself. So we'll go out and we will bombard. Oops, sorry. We will bombard the fortress. So we shall save here. There's some initial things already done. And we shall begin our first turn. And hopefully the game will not crash. Because that would suck. <laughs> that would be quite annoying. Obviously, the game will take longer to load as the uh, amount of units increases. Right, yo, I am back again due to the bloody fact that this is crashing. I honestly, honestly, it's annoying. I think it's to do with the fact of moving the mouse or doing something during the computing of the turn. It's really fickle like that. It's really quite annoying. So, yes, they would go there. Blah, da, ba, do, ba, da, ba, da, ba. Uh, it's a good thing, I suppose, in a way, because I forgot to talk about these decisions, which are quite important, actually. So, we do have a lot of decisions that will affect uh, the roads and the transportation, etc., etc. So, this is kind of like Adelia Ayeta Est in the way of clearing and creating roads. So, we could recreate a road down here, which would be kind of okay, I suppose. It's like the only place we can create a road right now. It does cost us a hell of a lot, though. It does give us some loyalty and BP, though, so that's something to bear in mind. Right then, obviously, this costs a considerable amount of dollars. So, I think we're going to go for the clearings. That will just make the region a little bit more developed. And uh, just help our supply situation. So, what do we want to do? I suppose we want to focus on the lines where our rails are. Like, so basically here. It does look as though these regions do connect. So, I think what we shall do is... Uh, have a clearing here then for some reason. Why not? 
the telegraph lines, that does give us some important developments. I will put that in Charleston, I do believe. As that is an area with industry, which is obviously incredibly important. We can export bales of cotton. Now, uh, we will organise exports of cotton to the European states over the Mexican border. Use the decision in Texas if you want an immediate $15,000 or refrain from using it and wait for some smugglers handled abstractly by the game. You have nothing to do in this case to expect, well, it's bought one stock of bale from our plantation. Right then, so the cotton bales were produced every year in November, but if not used up, they can rot at any moment. So I imagine doing it manually means that you will be able to do it faster, you'll, get, you'll be sure that they're being sold. So that's a $15,000 guarantee there for us. So in essence, from the clearing that we spent on the Telegraph lines, we'll gain that back immediately. Which is quite good for us, actually. Okay, so we do have another ship here. We have the Texas Squadron. So we are going to send that up to Charleston. There we go. Lovely jubbly. Okay. Give it a save here. And that seems to be about it. Besides the demonstrations. Right then, we will plant a covert action and try to incite demonstrations against local authorities. Our plan is to lower popular support for the enemy. Enemy loyalty will be lowered by 25% if it is indeed successful. Enemy cities where at least 15% citizens loyal to our cause can be targeted. Chance of success 75%. That's pretty damn good and that's only $10,000. So we're going to use it in the major centres of the northern... Uh, northern... Uh, I'm trying to think of the word actually. Northern power base, that's it. Right then, so we do have New York here, we're going to use it in New York. We have Rockland. I'm basically looking for the areas that are high in VP. Well, the areas like this, and we'll use it in these areas. Um, Hartford. Let's see. Philadelphia for damn sure. Um, where is it? Brooklyn is quite good too. Let's see. Wilmington, Baltimore, that's quite nice. And that's very close to the front as well, so if we can do that, that will be quite good for us. There we go, so we have counterintelligence. We can also draft troops, that increases the amount of uh, conscripts that we have, which is quite important actually. It does cost us some loyalty and victory points, but honestly we're going to need those conscripts. So we'll use them in Montgomery and we'll use them in Charleston. So we are low on uh, victory points right now, so we might not be able to do that with both of them, but I will. Okay, and there's also Blockade Runner. Now, that would gain us some war supplies, as we are going to be very, very low on them, and we're going to need a lot of war supplies to be able to build shit and to increase our infrastructure. So I am going to sacrifice some more national morale for that, as I do want to have that capability. So we are going to save the game, and hopefully everything will work out fine and hunky-dory. So, I'm not going to touch anything, and hopefully that will not crash the game. It could be uh, to do with the recording program, which would be kind of annoying, but I hope it should be okay. If not, then I am going to have to find out why it's crashing, or if you guys do know why the game crashes so much, especially the critical errors, then I would be very, very thankful if you could tell me. Right then, so we, yep, there we go, only 75 men there, and the fort has been easily taken. With uh, minimal loss. Right, there we go. So I didn't touch anything and the game did. Right, Virginia succeeds from the Union. And uh, Fort Sumter has been bombarded. The Confederacy's attempt to extend its sovereignty over forts that remained in the Union has received considerable public attention, both in the North and the South. When President Lincoln planned to send supplies to Fort Sumter in Charleston Harbor, he informed the state to avoid hostilities. South, uh, South Carolina, however, acts as the commander of the fort to surrender immediately on April 12, 1861. He rejected the offer. Confederate batteries opened fire, firing for 36 straight hours on the fort. The garrison returned fire, but was ineffective, and the fort surrendered. Fort Sumter rapidly became a symbol of rival definitions of sovereignty and honour. So, yeah, they, uh, they went through absolute hell. No corpse before 1862, which is going to be bloody awful. I can't make a bloody corpse, but I'll have to make do with that then. 
fortification started in the capital. So basically, both capitals have three fortifications and defensive works being planned for them, which will be constructed very soon. Right then, so there was only 75 men and 5 guns. Um, apparently, they uh, they basically just surrendered. We did take some considerable losses, though. We did lose a few men, actually, so that's fair enough. They did fight. So, there we go. And uh, now we have this army free, so we're going to have to plan for when um, uh, North Carolina succeeds as well. So we want to be on the important rail tracks. So we could head to, uh, we'll head to Florence, we'll head to Florence. Hmm. We'll have to use the rail transport then, fair enough. Okay, so the ships are coming, that's good. Uh, we do have the fort batteries, which I will put inside the fort. I will tell them to go on the defensive and to hold at all costs. So basically, uh, the area of Charleston is very well protected. What's interesting is, these areas, these ports, can be blockaded by the forts. So basically, Savannah would be blockaded if it had, well, if this was a Union fort. So that's quite interesting. And I do have a plan, actually. I have a plan to try and sneak some cavalry through and try and capture a port on this side of the river. Because we are going to find it extremely hard to get past Alexandria. But if we could, say, land at Salisbury or Little Creek, well, it would have to be Salisbury due to the fort there, well, to the port. But if we could land there, we could capture the rail, and we could get behind the Union forces, and strike at Wilmington, Westchester, Philadelphia, which is incredibly valuable, even using the rivers to try and get up there, Trenton, and then march to New York City, which would absolutely devastate the Union. And you do notice that we do have $2,068 to us. We have some conscripts, we have some war supply, we have a limited rail pool, well, pool, but other than that, we're doing quite well. So let's take a look. We could recruit some units, actually, so where could we potentially recruit units? Ah, we do have some leaders over here. We have some generals, so let's take a look at these generals. We'll put them all into the same pool. So we have Bush Rob Johnson, a 3 2 one Mr. M.J. Thompson, a 4 2 one um, Gustavus W. Smith, 411. A Charles S. Winder. Winder. Is it Winder or Winder? 432. N.S. Evans, 232. Ruggles, 421. And a Whiting, 311. So they're pretty shit. <laughs> they're not that good. He's pretty good, though, because he has some traits which are going to be extremely useful. So what forces do we have in uh, Virginia? We only have the militias. This militia is actually active, so I do want to send this to Harper's Ferry. As soon as possible, actually. Right, even with rivering movement right then, so we could be there in one day. So we'll get there in one day and we'll enter the structure and try and hold Harper's Ferry, as it's going to be very important, as it is the end, and it is connected. So if we were to take Frederick, or Friedrich, then that would be pretty damn useful, as that would give us access to the Union line. So Harper's Ferry is incredibly important for both sides in this conflict. As it was said by Mr. Lincoln, a house of cards, what was it? A house divided cannot stand. A house divided against itself cannot stand. That's it. A house of cards. Okay. So we do have our forts that are quite nicely garrisoned over here. Other than that, we just have these forces, these generals that we can't really do too much with now. So what I'm going to do is I can recruit a Confederate Infantry Brigade. Not here, though. I could recruit it down here. But is there much point to recruiting it down here when it's not going to be of much use? We could recruit some cannon. The six-pounder cannon. Not, not too useful. Not too useful at all. So I'll have to hold on for the time being. I don't. I, I need these troops closer to the front, in essence. That's what I need. Um, we'll send him over there, Mr. Thompson, to try and reach Harper's Ferry and take command of those troops there, the militiamen there. Right here, so we did take control of this. Fantastic. The ships should go into harbour and we shall be good. Okay. Do we have the demonstration options? We do. I am going to use this in, uh, let's see, um, I'm trying to look for the best points. Now this is quite an important rail hub as you can see, Montgomery, Montgomery is quite important, Rockland, Essex, okay, um, Queens, 
We'll go for Queens, basically Brooklyn, as that is another of the important Union cities. So we do have a city over here, Lewisburg, which is still loyal to the Union. Okay. So we do have a lot of forces around the nation that will activate in time. So as you can see that St. Louis is indeed garrisoned. Do we have any forces that are activated or able to move right now? No. We have some forces that will become activated in Memphis, but we shall have to wait. Right then, so the, Vic here, well, the Vicksburg squadron is ready. Could they make it to St. Louis? No, they couldn't. I do enjoy this, though, because there's a hell of a lot of rivers, and they're... Ooh, we do have you. And you are definitely able to use them. God damn, we're not able to travel there. That's a shame. I think it's basically here. Oh, we can travel here. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, we're just not able to travel through here then. That's a shame. We do have this general, I, uh, right, Arkansas. Well, what's he like? Wow! A 7 4 3. Holy shit, with all these traits as well? My god, he's fucking brilliant. This leader has a true charismatic aura. He provides a plus 5%, uh, well, plus 5 maximum cohesion and 25% increase in fatigue recovery of the units. That's bloody amazing. Adept Raider. This leader allows an 85% chance of retreat. Bloody hell. Very fast mover and a cavalryman. He's fucking insane. He's going to be our cavalry leader, no doubt. No bloody doubt about it. He's going to be leading the cavalry. Absolutely incredible general. That's some nice look there. Okay. You are not yet activated. Fair enough. So other than that, we don't really have any forces activated. We can take a look at what the Union's doing here. And we can see what's going on here. Um, right, for some, well, Fort Sumter bombarders, right, the Carolina, Carolina, Carolina runners took 20 hits. Uh, we won a battle against the United States, of course we did. Winchester Militia is now active. Suffolk Militia, ah, brilliant, so we can send the Suffolk Militia to take Norfolk, which will be important. You'll see why, if you don't know anything about it. We have the gunboats active in these regions. Yes, I'm going to send this squadron up here to uh, Vicksburg as well. Fortifications start in the capitals, force them to bombard it, da 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 da. The Confederacy, da da da. The Union has decided to declare a complete blockade of the Confe uh, Confederacy, which has increased foreign intervention levels by 10, which is quite nice. Oh, by 5, sorry. New Brigadier Generals have been appointed and await commands in Richmond. Okay. Cotton bales have started to rot in your harbours. Let's port them to foreign territories for immediate gain. F12? F12? Why are you F12? Ah, oh, right. It's the decisions I see. Okay. Bloody hell. I love how I had like 14 last time. But no, they've like kind of bloody just rotted away to nothing. That's a bloody shame. I shall be right back.